Hello everyone, and welcome back to another review. This time I'd like to talk about the Mr. Speaker's Eon, which is their new planar magnetic headphone that retails for $800. So it's about half the price of their flagship models, the Ether Flow and the Ether C Flow. Um, I just want to get straight into the review. Uh, this might be a longer than usual, well, not longer than usual, but quite a long review. So uh, if you have any more questions, they might be answered in the written version, which I'll put the link in the description down below if you want to read more. So let's get started with the build quality of these headphones. Okay, now Mr. Speakers has this philosophy. Uh, Dan Clark has this philosophy when it comes to build quality. Uh, the comfort has to, it has to be kind of like feather light. Like if you, if you listen to the Mr. Speakers uh, Ether Electrostat, that is definitely the lightest headphone I have ever touched. When I picked it up, I remember I oh, I off shot it because I was expecting it to be heavier than it was. The Eon is definitely heavier than that because it uses magnets instead of you know electrostatic technology. But it's not. It's still so light. It's about three hundred and forty grams without the cable. Now compare this to my other headphones, which is like the Utopia is four hundred ninety grams without the cable. Uh, the the Icon is over six hundred grams without the cable, and so this is a really light headphone in my opinion. So the Nitinol headband is very unique uh, to Mr. Speakers. I don't think any other headphone that I've ever seen uses this sort of design. It's very, very um, bendable, and I don't think it'll... It doesn't seem like it's going to break. Um, it's very springy and very tough. Uh, despite it being so light and reliant on build materials, you know, the whole headphone as a, as a whole, it doesn't give the feeling that it's cheap or an afterthought. I'd, I'd say this looks quite premium for the price, and I don't foresee any problems with breaking. So the comfort, the comfort is insanely good. Once again, I do think Dan you know, holds a vendetta against really heavy headphones like Odyssey, or headphones with poor weight management, also like Odyssey, unless it's the LCD4 with the carbon fiber headband. Um, the strap. Uh, the clamp is very comfortable on these headphones, and the ear pads are large and air-shaped, providing ample room for my larger to average airs. The leather strap that rests on your head makes it so these, uh, this is like a disappearing act of a headphone. Unless you're in a hot and humid climate, because recently during London's heat wave, I did feel a slight discomfort over some time while using these headphones, but since that's gone away, I've been just fine. So the leather air pads are very soft, plush, and comfortable. And they're not stiff at all, and they're just soft out of the box. They don't need time to break in or anything like that. The headband adjustment uh, conforms to your head size really effortlessly, and there's no incremental adjustment that you have to keep track of. You just pull them over your ears, and it just adjusts accordingly. Um, aesthetically, I'm a, I do like how the Eon looks, but I do have to admit it's probably like one of those love it or hate it kind of headphones. It's a subtle midnight blue color that looks quite handsome in my opinion, but... In certain lighting conditions, like if you put it in full out like sunlight, for instance, it does tend to have like a really smeared quality to it, kind of like a muddy look. And this is probably because it's so glossy, and so so glossy. It's a fingerprint magnet, and Mr. Speakers acknowledges this because they provide you with, <laughs> they provide you with a soft cloth, a microfiber cloth, uh, to clean this in the future, uh, which you will be doing somewhat often if you keep you know using these uh, yeah and uh, of course I have to touch on this I'll touch on it more later in the sound quality uh, a part section but they do provide you with two foam pad inserts that you slip into the air pads to increase the upper bass a bit but I'll talk about that later so the Mr. Speaker's proprietary to my knowledge anyway I haven't seen these anywhere else uh, connectors are back and this time they're attached to a cable that Mr. Speaker's called the dumber cable which is the younger brother of the ether included dumb cable. Now the dumber cable terminates in a 3.5 millimeter jack, but it has a screw on quarter inch adapter attached by default. Um, as far as cables go, I think it's pretty solid and lacking in anything that would draw any kind of complaints. Uh, I did want a balanced version, so I went ahead and sourced an aftermarket cable from Custom Cans UK. Uh, I tried to make it match too with midnight blue and navy blue color. So besides the box, Eon comes with a hard shell carrying case that might be one of the most welcome changes to me anyway, because uh, the old E3 case was uh, this weird reddish brown that I didn't really like at all. Uh, according to many people, they don't online they don't like it either. So this is just plain black, and I think it's just a very standard, very clean looking 
case and I do I do like how rigid it is and this will definitely keep them safe when you want to travel with them and finally you get a certificate of authenticity from Mr. Speakers so talking about the sound I'll admit that I was cautious this time around when it came to evaluating the sound of the Eon because uh, seeing how my final impressions of the Ethos flow did not line up with my initial ones uh, from CanJam last year I took care to try this with a variety of sources first and the sound is pretty consistent so I'm good to go so the Eon is a very punchy headphone and it has no qualms about the transient response. Like there's no lingering, you know, sluggish or whatever in this uh, headphone and it will keep up with whatever genre you throw at it. This is a prime reason why it sounds like a really good all-rounder for the price, which is something I'm going to be saying a lot during this review. And if you consider that along with its comfort and isolation, this might be the perfect office headphone. So let's touch uh, briefly on the foam inserts. Yes, I think they're really needed. Uh, Dan openly mocks people who are, rely heavily on measurements to draw their impressions. And I must admit, I do share this mentality to a level, but after becoming more active in the community late, late last year, um, I never looked at frequency response charts before that so much. I would just speak to what I hear, which I still kind of do. But I, when I saw the retail model Eon being measured with a large dip in the lower mids and upper base, I was worried because I did put down money on this. I got in on the pre-order and I bought these. This is not a review unit. It wasn't enough to make me regret putting down money uh, because I wanted to evaluate the Eon without time constraints that come with the review unit. But it did make me gulp a bit because I was like, you know, I know what sound signature I prefer. So when I saw that, I was like, uh, oh, that's a little unfortunate, isn't it? I was I'm actually rooting for the I was actually rooting for the Eon because I wanted something of its form factor to complement my other headphones which are just glass compared to this. So what I saw and what I what was measured seems to be an Eon without the foam inserts in. So let me just explicitly state that I spent some time listening to them in this configuration and I won't be returning because I think the foam inserts without them the low end of the Eon sounds anemic and thin which isn't a good sound in my opinion. And acoustic guitars sound overly sparkly and don't retain any of the accurate timbre that comes from good tone wood and the bass is largely missing. So needless to say, in this review, I'm going to be continuing with my impressions, which include having them in, which I think is justified because they're both included and they're not a third party mod. So the sonic presentation of the Eon is very much that of a closed headphone. The soundstage is quite intimate, but the imaging is really stellar and you really don't get the sense that you've run out of space in your instrument tracks, you know, in songs. The very forward presentation, along with its impressive detail retrieval, means that I ended up noticing stuff in songs that weren't really prominent before uh, in headphones, even with something as detailed and revealing as the Sennheiser HD 800, which I would argue is has superior detail retrieval, but it's wrapped up in a presentation that's almost too wide for its own good. So if you really want your micro detail with an easily noticeable reach, you will appreciate the Eon for that ability. The base of the Eon really sets it apart from the Ether C flow, in my opinion, in a good way. For one big reason, and that is texture. One of my biggest complaints with the Ether C flow is that along with the extension not going very far, there is a rounded effect around the bass tone, so it makes bass guitar sound too soft and attack in presentation. Yeah, you'll hear the notes, but they're just there in terms of a feeling. And they lack the actual information or you know the string rattle or the texture that I find quite important personally. So not only does the Eon extend further than the Ether C flow, but it does so in a manner that retains a good amount of texture around the lower frequencies, which coupled with its fast transient response means that this uh, will consume double kick drum patterns and fast picked uh, strum bass licks quite effortlessly. Would I say that it's ultra realistic in this regard compared to top of the line cans like the Utopia? No, I would not, but for $800, I haven't heard better. And that includes the Odyssey LCD 2 2016 revision, which is more laid back, but I must say it's overall probably tonally superior. So while the bass is fast, it does lack a bit of slam compared to my dynamic driver headphones. Uh, this is probably more to do with the technology and Dan's own tuning's philosophy, rather than it being an outright mistake or a knock against the Eon. Uh, if you're a bass head, if you really want that huge bass effect, you, do, you should probably look elsewhere. So even with the foam pads inserted, the lower mid-range is uh, averse to any characterizations of warmth that someone might use to describe it. Uh, yes, it feels more present in this region than the Ether C flow to my ears, but it still is not nearly the level of emphasis that you will hear, that you will hear in headphones by like Odyssey or ZMF. 
There is a small dip that makes male vocals sound a little distant and electro guitar distortion lacks some of the lower mid-range chugging sound that is so prevalent in palm muting techniques found in like metal music. This is of course amplified without the pads. But it still isn't quite at the level of something like the Soundmagic HP150, which is a far cheaper headphone that is absolutely gutted in this frequency. So I admit that I could use a little more presence here, but I, ref I don't really want to EQ it or try it like that. I'll leave that to others. So as I said before, the intimate soundstage means I can enjoy, enjoy the Eon's capability to resolve detail quite nicely in a more noticeable fashion. So the headphone's mid-range has the ability to separate tracks really well. The vocal harmonies ringing out very clearly in a manner not intruded by conventional complaints of narrow headphone soundstage. Not only that, but the texture of the presentation is also really impressive, and I don't get the sense that something is being left behind in the mix, nor do I hear any smoothing going on. This means that electric guitar patterns, even if they don't sound as true to life as standing in front of a cranked amplifier, they won't fail you uh, in how clearly they showcase each and every note. If you've ever heard a metal song with several noodling simultaneous guitar melodies on top of a frantic rhythm track, this headphone laughs at something like that, because the drums, the bass, and the, e and the electric guitars are on equal footing. The upper mid-range is not dipped, as is the case with the Focal Elaire, which I would argue has a superior tonality with electric guitars and distortion in general, but lack the Eon's ability to present everything as effortlessly. Actually, there is a good amount of texture and air around stringed instruments here, uh, violins and the like do not sound smoothed out or compromised to me. Uh, female vocals also don't sound, uh, the female vocals actually do sound like they retain a lot of body, more so than male vocals on this headphone. And other instruments in this region that I thought sounded really stellar included saxophones and trumpets, so maybe this is a really good big band or jazz uh, headphone. After this, there is definitely a bit of sharpness to the treble. It's not like the Bear Dynamic T1 or stock Sennheiser HD 800 in this regard, but there is a distinct feeling that you may encounter some glare dependent on the source material. It's not overpowering, however, even to a slightly trouble sensitive person like myself, and I will happily take it if it means that the rest of the Eon can sound how it does, uh, because cymbals and their patterns sound both precise and very quick. So many a time will I put on a song and immediately think, Huh, that cymbal pattern is definitely holding its own relative to everything else, especially in frantic and very layered recordings. Uh, this is a region that headphones like the ZMF Atticus and LCD2 by Odyssey do not do quite as well, with cymbals being buried in their presentation compared to the Eon. The snap of the snare drums is also quite prominent in the mix, but I would argue that it lacks a bit of the impact that a headphone like the Focal Elaire or Focal Utopia can muster. So if I had to sum the trouble up overall, I would say that it is somewhat comfortably bookended to how the end, the rest of the headphones sounds. So yeah, it's a bit dipped in the lower frequencies in the presence region, but once you have the Eon on for a while, you won't notice it so much, and you'll definitely enjoy just how delicate the balance it is between the rest of the headphone and the treble. So regarding amping, uh, it might be easy to see that the Eon is 13 ohms, and immediately assume that this would be powered from like a smartphone, but nope. It won't be a uh, full volume at my Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus doesn't make it loud enough and uh, this headphone is very much a planar magnetic headphone so keep that in mind because it might not be as power hungry as let's say an LCD 4 by Odyssey, uh, Odyssey uh, the 200 ohm version uh, but if you do want to properly amp this if you want the full extent of the bass response without any distortion so my portable Venture Electronics Runabout Plus amplifier, which can power Utopia with no qualms if need be, it can't manage the Eon quite so well. But my shit Layer 2, uh, my Venture Electronics Runabout 2 balanced, and my Audio GD NFB28, you know, devour the, this ampli this uh, headphone, sorry, and gives me the sound as intended. So despite my personal belief that the Eon is a proud performer at its price range, I do feel the need to compare it to other headphones around this region. Ultimately, while I do feel that many of these other headphones outdo the Eon in one or two regards, they might not be able to retain as much balance as the Eon overall, making this the all-rounder winner, if you like the sound signature. So I've selected headphones here that I would consider to be other all-rounders, and it should be noted that the Eon is at least $200 cheaper than these other headphones. And I will also be talking only about the sound and not the build quality and you know comfort concerns. So I can't think of two vastly different sound signature gaps in the audio world than Mr. Speakers and Odyssey. 
Uh, the former tends to rely heavily on technical prowess and detailed retrieval at the cost of natural tonality, while Odyssey emphasizes just that, uh, along with a more laid-back and pleasantly warm sound. So while the LCD-2 may sound far smoother in its mid-range, it lacks some of the texture compared to the Eon. Uh, where the presentation of vocals might sound so gorgeous on the LCD-2 with all the weight and body requ required, the Eon will counter with the exposing of vocal layering in a more intricate manner. The Eon is also far faster in transients than the LCD-2, which goes for a more laid-back approach. Uh, the climb to the treble is also an area where the Eon might dip some but then come back with force, while the LCD-2 seems a bit more even in its ascent uh, before being comfortably rolled off in a very odyssey manner, to be honest. Uh, the soundstage width on both is similar, despite one being closed and the other being open. So the Atticus is a punchy headphone with a lot of weight to its low end. Um, like the LCD-2, it emphasizes natural tonality, but it does have some difficulty with certain genres of music where the bass might overwhelm the mid-range a bit. This is alleviated substantially through the use of a fat trimming amplifier like the Shit Layer 2, but it is definitely a knock against it compared to the Eon, which can sound like itself from most setups. So the sheer force of the bass slam in the Atticus is breathtaking, and the Eon can't really counter that in that regard at all. But it is far faster, and even though the Atticus is more dynamic and punchy than the LCD-2, it can't quite match the Eon's planar-driven uh, transients and uh, speed. So kick drums may hit harder on the Atticus, but on the Eon they're like surgical strikes that are felt no matter what's going on with the rest of the track. Something I feel is a bit more consistent than the Atticus. The Eon does, however, lack a certain lower mid bloom that makes the Atticus such a warm headphone with body. So acoustic guitars sound quite a bit more lifelike on the Atticus than on the Eon, which is sharper but you know, because of the lower mid-range dip, it doesn't have the weight behind each strum. Uh, the mid-range in general on the Atticus is very liquid and smooth, but it lacks the texture that the Eon or even its elder brother, the Icon, provide. The Atticus also has a slightly wider soundstage than the Eon. So the Eon also retains more air and upper treble than the Atticus, which like the LCD-2 is more towards the comfortably rolled off side of things. If I had to choose either the Eon or the Elair as an all-rounder, it would actually just come down to setting and personal preferences. Uh, if I needed to be mindful of others around me, I would definitely choose the Eon for its far superior isolation. It's also easier to wear for extended periods of time due to its design and being substantially lighter than the uh, layer, which is 450 grams. If isolation wasn't a concern and I was chained to my desk with an uncompromised audio chain, then I would take the layer. What the layer does can't be reproduced by the Eon, simply put. This needs a little explaining, however. So the Eon is fast, but the layer is similarly fast, and what it comes down to is the surgical presentation of the Eon versus the impactful presentation of the Elair. If the Eon might be able, the Eon might be able to replicate each drum kick and snare hit with precision, but the Elair doesn't lag too far behind in my opinion, but it brings with it a very bombastic sound signature that makes everything sound larger than life. It's quite interesting and it's really a fulfilling moment in this hobby when you can hear the clearly audible differences between a snare drum hit on the Eon, which is and then a snare drum here which is holding on for dear life on the Elair, same tracks, uh, and the difference is just because of the headphones. The Eon does seem to be the cleaner sounding headphone overall, however, with the Elair having a bit of a shoddy mid-range. The Eon is also more even throughout the frequency chart, uh, while the Elair has a more pronounced upper mid-range dip that can render female vocals kind of distant. The Elair also has more mid-bass and lower mid-range presence, however, making the electric guitar distortion sound incredibly lifelike, also due to its shouty mid-range a bit, I guess, and not smooth over. The separation between tracks is superior on the Eon, however. So when it comes down to soundstage, the Elair's somewhat narrow soundstage presentation actually edges out the Eons a little bit in width. So I've used the term all-rounder so much in this review, I don't feel like I need to add much hair in genre pairings, but I do want to say that yes, this headphone will keep up with pretty much any genre you throw at it. Will it ever be the best sounding at that genre? No, it won't be, but the fact that it can be so consistently good across the board is a big plus point. But acoustic guitar music might be one of the weaker genres, however, 
while the ether sea flow to my ears relegated acoustic guitars into plastic bodies rather than having tone wood like they usually do, the Eon does manage to fare quite a bit better. It's still lacking in the body necessary for accurate presentation however, but I don't think that really matches to Dan to be honest. From what I've heard of Mr. Speaker's lineup, they don't really seem to emphasize, uh, they do seem to emphasize technical prowess over musicality. So yes, the Eon is a more fun listen than, let's like say, a stock Sennheiser HD 800, but it's not throwing away detail uh, retrieval ability to sound more natural. Uh, unlike the, on the Ether C Flow, I am fine with this on the Eon because it does correct the bass texture issues that I did hear on the Elder Planar being the Ether C Flow, and it has a more even frequency throughout. So to sum it all up, I just have to say I think the Eon is a triumph for a few different reasons. First of all, it is an $800 headphone in a hobby that seems to be pushing upwards every year in price. It takes on the trickle-down technical prowess of the Ether flows and merges them into a punchier, more consumer-focused tuning successfully. It's an all-rounder that won't win any battles in distinct categories, but it will soldier on admirably. It's remarkably light and comfortable, and it isolates very well, which according to the which along with its comfort makes for a very prime office headphone. It definitely is one of the most unique looking headphones on the market. Now I personally like it, but I know some people don't, so that's up in the air. That being said, I have glossed over the price a lot in this review, basically saying that they sound really good for the price. I need to ground myself here a bit because eight hundred dollars is a lot of money no matter how you look at it. And it is totally acceptable for someone to expect a headphone that is stellar in some regard at this price range, rather than a headphone that does many things well instead. So if you are able to do sample this and other headphones, but I do stand behind my earlier statement that you probably won't find anything more far reaching in, in genre pairing ability at $800 than the Eon. To my ears, this is a better headphone than the Ether C Flow. And I have not heard the original Ether closed, so to me, this is Mr. Speaker's best closed can of fully proprietary design. Whatever issues I may have with the lower mid-range, the presence dip, or the treble glare do not overcome the sheer amount of good that I hear in this headphone. It is so clean in presentation, it's very fast and punchy, and it reveals details in a manner that actually outperforms similarly priced headphones. It's light, it's comfortable, and it has a unique design, and thus I find it having a place among my four main headphones quite easily. So that has been my Mr. Speaker's Eon review, and I thank you for watching, and I will be back with another review in about a week or so. No promises. All right, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.